Hi, my name is Chris Johnson. I'm an FLW Tour Pro. This is my third year on the tour, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about fishing a swim bait. This isn't your traditional way of uh, fishing a swim bait. You usually see a big six inch bass strix swim bait, and you got Texas rigged and catching big larges and smallies. The setup I'm going to show you is a little bit different. It's more subtle and it's more keen on a smallmouth bite. Um, this lake we're at, for example, is Lake Cumberland. It's got a lot of smaller shad. So they're really keying into this smaller swim bait. It's a 3.8 Kitek. And what I have here is a quarter ounce head with a three odd hook. So we're just, we're rigging it open hook. Um, show you here. Very simple. It's a very subtle, subtle bait. And this bait is gonna catch you a ton of smallmouth bass. We're using it here at Cumberland but I fish a lot up north in the Great Lakes region, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And this is probably in my top two baits that I'm gonna catch these giant smallmouth on anywhere in the country. And uh, so I highly recommend to give it a try. The only thing I switch up a little bit is the swim bait size. Sometimes I'll go down to a 3.3 swim bait. And if I'm fishing a little deeper, I might go to a little heavier head. If I'm fishing shallower, I'll go as light as an eighth ounce. And uh, what we're using it on here I got a 5.51 uh, to gear ratio uh, reel. I got a seven foot rod, uh, medium action, and uh, I'm using 12 pound fluorocarbon. So what you're doing is you're just creeping it along the bottom very slowly. And uh, when they hit it, you know it because they thump it and uh, it's a lot of fun. So we're gonna get out there and give it a try. All right. All right. I like to do a little different knot than the polymer knot. Um, I'll show you what it is. And I'm not sure what it's called. It just I've been showing it, and it's a lot stronger on fluorocarbon. So leave yourself lots of line. Always makes it easier. What you want to do is make an overhand knot, and then give me a second. And then you want to loop this around this loop's line three times. And then you take the tag end, and you put it back through that top loop like so and then you wet it and you cinch it all down and you see when you pull it all together it makes a nice little knot at the end there and it's a little different than the palmer knot because the palmer knot kind of cuts into itself and this knot, you'll never break at the knot when you're trying to fish fluorocarbon. It's just a whole lot stronger. I wish I knew the name for you, but I don't. I just know it works. Then you cut the tag ends off. And we are ready to go catch some smallmouth. So what we're fishing here, we got a sloping bank. There's kind of some clay and some shelf rock mixed in. And I'm kind of staying out a bit from the bank here. And haven't quite figured out what depth they're in. So what we're doing is just casting up shallow two or three feet of water and just letting it sink to bottom and then just slowly creeping it down these shelves. And some of these smallmouth are definitely spawning and if they're not, they're really close. So we'll just keep fishing up along here. And if we find that they're all really shallow, maybe I'll go in a little tighter bank and then parallel. So my bait's in the strike zone a little bit longer. But until we figure that out, we'll just stay out a bit and keep plugging away. Every once in a while when I'm reeling down this slope, I, I like to stop reeling just to make sure that my bait is in contact with bottom. And it's a really nice bite when you do get one because you're just slowly creeping and you just feel a little donk. And then you set the hook and it loads up and it's game on. Everyone knows what smallmouth are like. And they're usually coming straight out of the water, so let's see if we can trick a few of them up here. It seems like the slower the reel, the better for this technique. Just, you gotta get confidence in doing it because it is a little slower fishing. So we're just fishing down the bank. We're inside a creek, main creek and then we're in a little pocket. And uh, you can see we're coming up to a little point with another little pocket. And it's always good to maybe key in on those a little bit longer because you got a lot higher percentage chance of catching one off this little inside point. So we're gonna slow down and make sure we give it three or four casts and cover this point and 
then just keep moving on. Usually when you're doing this, you'll run into a group of them. You'll kind of get five or six in about a hundred yard stretch. So I'll give you an example of how these swim baits kind of work all over the country and even in Canada. Um, one of my favorite tournaments to fish is the Sturgeon Bay Open in Wisconsin. And this bait right here is my number one go-to. Um, I use usually an eighth, eighth ounce head and I'll switch it up a bit. I'll use a spinning rod with uh, six to eight pound test. The water's crystal clear. And you're usually fishing, I don't know, about 45 to 50 degree water. So again, your presentation has to be very slow, but what you're doing with the spinning rod is firing it as, as far as you want to get the bait as far away from the boat as you possibly can. And the reason being, you're in five to 10 feet of water. So if the fish can see you, when that cold temperatures, they will not bite. So you're getting the bait as far away from you, from you as you can, and that's why the spinning rod's kind of important. And then just slowly creeping it along the bottom. And uh, to give you an example, last time we were there, I think we weighed 30, 32 pounds for, uh, for six fish. But the, the fun part was we probably caught 30 to 40 fish over four pounds. And it's just one of those days you dream of. But I highly recommend if anyone ever has a chance to go up north and try this bait, um, you can have one of those dreams day, dream days, no problem. So when you're using these little swim, bits, swim baits, um, it's pretty hard to beat a shad color when you're in the south. Um, I'll, I'll throw this color on any part of the Tennessee River, just it, it looks like a shad. Um, when you're going up a little bit further north, that's when I venture into, um, for example, I've used Green Bay, Wisconsin before, um, as an example. You can get into like a black swim bait or one of my favorites up there, and I don't usually tell too many people this, is green pumpkin. Um, a lot of people don't throw green pumpkin up there, and uh, they probably should start. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's my favorite color, and um, I've weighed some of my biggest bass on a green pumpkin swim bait because it's a different forage up north. Um, you got a lot more gobies, and gobies in the north are like Mars bars to humans. They just, they're full of protein, and uh, that's why our bass are actually getting so much bigger. If you came up fishing, in uh, Ontario, one, one lake I'm really familiar with is Lake Ontario. Seven, eight years ago, a good weight was 20 pounds. Now, since the gobies have been introduced, they've really taken off and the fish have really keyed in on them. We're getting 30 pound stringers to win a tournament now for five fish. So um, yeah, gobies are an invasive species, but the smallmouth are absolutely flourishing on them because they're eating um, all these gobies. And, this is probably my best bait to imitate a goby because you can cast it out and you can really cover a lot of water. Now, the only time you're gonna run into problems throwing this bait is it's a bottom contact bait for the most part. When you get moss on the bottom, you don't really wanna drag it across the bottom because it's gonna get munged up. And when that's the case, you go to a little lighter head, uh, maybe an eighth ounce, and uh, you gotta you gotta count it down. It's a little more tricky because you want it as close to bottom as you can, but you don't actually want to hit bottom with the swim bait. And it can still be a very productive bait. Just you're not fishing it on bottom anymore. You're about a foot off, and that's when you want to keep your rod tip up. And you're using braided line with a fluorocarbon leader on a spinning rod usually, and uh, just keep it off bottom. If you tick bottom every once in a while, just kind of snap your rod tip and. It'll get the moss off the bait for you, and it's gonna be a very useful bait uh, for you in the summer for big smallmouth in the northern parts. So this is the problem when you're fishing an open face or an open hook swim bait around all this chunk rock is you're gonna get hung up every once in a while, but it is worth it when you do start catching them. And, uh, and hopefully you get them back like that. So usually when you get on the other side of it with this chunk rock, you can get it back. But there is another way to hook up these swim baits and that's using the belly weight. Um, you can Texas rig it and you can see we're coming up to a nice bushy tree and you throw this open hook near it, you're probably gonna get hung up. So it's nice to have two hooked up in your arsenal. I usually use like a 3.8 with a belly hook and then you can throw it right on the edge of this tree and 
if they're not on the bank, they might be suspended. So it's another tactic to have. And that's why you have five or six rods on your deck so you can hook them up a couple different ways. We've, uh, what we're doing here, we've changed banks a little bit. We're on a little steeper grade and you can see it's a little more slated and we weren't really getting them in the last creek. So we've just changed up the bottom and see what we can do here. He hit it good. Looks like a decent one too. Oh yeah, that's a big one. We'll give him a little bit with this light line. On the old swim bait, old faithful. Alright, we better not bolt flip this one on 12 pound. Time for a new bait, but it's a nice Cumberland smallmouth, the old swim bait. We're going to put them in the live well, maybe get a few pictures of them later, and then we'll let them go for another day. That was embarrassing. He hit it on the fall. Feels like another decent one, actually. He's going to show himself. This one actually hit it on the fall on me. These things do fight. Oh, that's another nice one. Oh. You know they're eating it when it's down there like that. So we just caught a nice smallmouth out here and one last tip is when you're throwing this swim bait around a lot of rocks, you're going to get a lot of frays and stuff. So always check your line, but uh, I, hope, I hope some of these tips helped you out in the swim bait and I'm Chris Johnson and uh, we'll see you later.